We got inspired. We jumped in. We got close. Don't you just love advertisements? We waited. We tied the knot. I don't. We I drifted. really, really, we really hate shoes. them. Oh, great. Another one. Women's boots? They're just so demeaning, you know? You might be wondering, mackerel phones, why is it there's an advertisement right here? Well, you see, that's because I'm on Congregate to play this game, Hero's Adventure. At the time I'm recording this, in uh, late 2017, they say that Flash is on its last legs, and this has left me concerned about the fate of Flash games. Of course, the vast majority of Flash video games are horrible, awful garbage. But there's some good stuff, too. So today I'm going to be doing a playthroughs of a handful of, and I know I'm going to say this wrong, Terry Kavanagh games. Who is Terry? Ka I'll call him Terry. Who is Terry? Well, he's most famous as the creator of VVVVVV. But to my surprise, he's also made a bunch of really weird little experimental titles in addition to extremely great platformers. Yeah, and as it turns out, he's actually appeared on my channel a couple times before. Well, you know, his games have. So it's interesting how that worked out. So this is my small part in trying to preserve these Flash games, albeit in video form rather than in any form that would be deeply meaningful or helpful, like playing them. Anyway, so I really don't know what this is. Um, but let's see the credits. See, there's his name right there for you to try and figure out how to say it yourself. It's Irish, I think, because he's Irish. <laughs> Rise and shine! You can't spend all day in bed. Why don't you go outside and play in the forest? Can do, parent. Whoa, we walk fast. Guess that's dad, that's mom, that's us. Neat. Are you mom? Well, clearly is your picture. Though you could be sister, but probably not. My little boy is growing up so fast. Yeah, it's mom. Thanks, mom. Love you too. Hey, dad. They have that retro graphics like VVVVVV. What's that? You're going off on an adventure? Oh, well, just make sure you're back for dinner. Sure. It's a pretty forest full of pretty flowers. That's... The rousing orchestral score seems a little misplaced with the graphics, but whatever. Um, this is a little darker. It's like the Lost Woods from A Link to the Past. Oh, it's a rat. Okay, so, um, what kind of magic we got? What? Okay. Random encounters. It is a hero's adventure. Um... What? This doesn't seem like a fair fight. A stray cat, huh? What items do we have anyway? Oh, we can poison it. Okay, this one can actually put up a fight, which makes sense since it's a cat. But obviously, you can't beat a human. Um... This boy is a developing serial killer, isn't he? Yeah... Yeah, he needs some counseling. Is this... what is this? Are these stones? Are these shears? Okay, it, if you say so. So... Yeah, this is not a good boy. Torturing and murdering animals is a very early sign. Um, uh... 
of developing serial killers. And it's, you know, he needs some counseling. It's not as ideal as it might appear around here, huh? Dinner's ready. Make sure you wash your hands if you've been playing outside. Oh, I wonder what sort of mischief you got up to today. His poor parents have no idea. Also, why are all the chairs facing the door? It's very peculiar. That's a good idea. Honey, sometimes I worry living out here in the middle of nowhere isn't good for a young boy. Oh, oh don't worry. He seems happy enough. I suppose you're right, dear. That mother's intuition. She can sense that something's wrong. Well... That was a clever use of RPG mechanics. Both funny and very disturbing. Once again, it's a sort of... Why am I saying once again? Well, it is the kind of idea that could be expanded into a much larger product, but I don't know that that would necessarily pack any more punch than it does in this short story form. This video game short story form, I mean. Well, nice job there, Terry. Let's see what's up next. Thanks for the heads up. And that goes for you too, anyone who's watching this who has photosensitivity, okay? Grab them by the eyes! That's a very scary name, but don't worry, this one is a lot normaler than the other one, I think. What are you doing? You can't just show up here with your fancy sign and... Ugh, what's wrong, old man, afraid of a little competition? Grr, I'm not afraid of you kids. You won't last a week here. Oh yeah, if you're so sure, let's make a bet. We bet we'll have more customers than you by the end of the week. Winner stays on this corner. You're on. You don't stand a chance. I'm gonna need one of those signs. He recognizes that in order to stay in business, he must adapt. So a day's already passed, right? I need a sign! Sold! Very old-fashioned looking gentleman. So, our guy is named Jay, I assume. That's a good start, but if you want to compete these days, You'll need more than a basic sign. I sell punch cards for all the latest settings. But they tend to sell out pretty quickly. Good thing we were in line first. Um, sure, I'll take your advice, old-timey gentleman man. Really, he looks like some kind of 19th century person. All right. So the best sign, you, we need to make the best sign we can by combining these cards which have different attributes for the sign. Basically, and you can see these numbers here, which let us know how much, how many customers they draw in. To be clear, I've played a little of this before, but not, not even probably half of it. Right now, you're just trying to get the best punch cards before Filthy Burger does. You'll take turns choosing cards. If I were you, I'd try to grab one of those color cards before someone else does. Thanks for the... well, advice. So what we need to do is maximize the number of customers we're gonna get per card. We have $50. Now, if we buy this one, we're left with uh, $10. So the best we could get from that then would be three customers plus three customers, so six customers. Now, is that the most we could get? What if instead we bought this color card and then we're left with $30? So we, with $30, we can buy, 
well, this one. And in that case, we'd end up with four each, and that's no good. I might have be missing something really obvious here, but I'm gonna go with, uh... I'm gonna go with Gradient. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. This is a turn-based store. I prefer food. Surrender is very menacing, and we're nice guys. Plus, this is really cheap, and it has a three rating anyway. The issue is that the other side still comes out with more cards overall, in the overall higher number, I think. But I'm confident that this'll be worth something. So... Food is the best. And we could write our own. I'd write something like... Best Burgers in Town. And... Three Gradient. So we'll have six customers, huh? Yeah, it looks like we could get another sign, but we don't have that right now. So... How do we advance? Hello? Oh, we can have multiple frames? Clearly we can! Good! I see, the Dun wasn't in the corner yet because we only had one frame. So we're gonna go with this one, and uh, seven customers, huh? Let's go! It's still Tuesday. People are appeal, you know, I'm not surprised that surrendering appeals to people. A lot of people, I think, have this sort of innate desire not so much to be told what to do, but to have Im important decisions made for them. So in that sense, it's a kind of surrender. A tie. Why are they confused? Maybe you guys could join forces and run a bigger, better business together. You know, the guy on the left, Jay, will use his years of experience, and the young guys will use their tech-savvy and connection to the young people, even if they are a bit smug. Good to know. It's actually kind of a clever idea, the way, the sense in which we're grabbing them by the eyes. They're going first today, huh? We should have gotten up earlier. Well, okay. Some of these are kind of odd, like... Very much so. Food... Well, okay, um... So what are we gonna do here? Right now, they have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six cards in this one, and they're all one. So they have six people, whereas we have, um, four... Five, we have the same number. We both have six customers right now. The question, once again, is although, of course, they're going to take a card, how do we maximize our number today? So, this card here will attract three customers no matter what. And it's a lot cheaper than this card. So, we could get this card today and this card. Unless, of course, the other guys go for this card, in which case we're kind of screwed. But I guess that's a risk we're going to have to take. Hey, wait a minute. We could just take this card. So how many would that leave us with? So these guys have six plus two plus however many this is. So that is eight. Whereas at this point, we have five and four, so that's nine. So we're totally doing better than them. If we got both of these, this is, um, I don't know. I'll take this one.
Only two cards, huh? It felt like I made a lot more decisions than that, but sure. Okay, um... Delicious. We gotta have that novelty. Actually, how about this? Oh, look at that. Now that is impressive. Eight whopping customers, huh? Oh, I see. These are all for... Okay. Yes, yeah, they, we can't stack. We can only have one message. Well, we might as well write our own. Um, best burgers. Wait, that first space bar press didn't register. Best burgers in town. I could write something scurrilous, but, you know, I figure that we, we want people to have a... I mean, you grab their attention, but we want them to want to eat, too. And it would attract a certain crowd, but not the kind of crowd Jay goes for. Well, let's go. Okay. These are some... This shows us how businesses see people. Not as individuals, but as faceless automatons that buy or, you know, don't. Wow, we're doing a lot better. A lot better, wow. Well, two customers better, but here that's a lot. Thank you, thank you. Jay is a local fixture. I'd like to imagine he's just imagining the audience and he's like doing that little dance on his own. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, going first isn't necessarily an advantage, but sure. So let's see, right now they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they have at least eight customers, whereas we have, uh, four, six, nine. Oh yeah. Nine is one more than eight. I remember that from school. So I go for this card. I could go for this card. I go for this card. But which card will I go for? Um, how would we maximize the numbers we get today? Obviously, just getting this one will not maximize it, because we could get two, three cards, and more than that, in fact, and we would still have, um, more than that, so I don't think this one is worth the price. That said, I'm gonna get the new Fast Cycle card. Maybe we can get the alternate border card? Darn it. Oh boy, we only have $20 left. We are not maximizing the amount of money we have today. Um, if only we'd saved for that turn, we could have gotten this one. Well, as it stands, I think the best we can do... Now, it's possible another card will appear that will be 10, so we could get this one and another $10 card, but as it stands, I'm not sure that's the case. Still, this attracts more people, so I'll take this card. And I'll take this one. We are not going to come out on top today. But I shouldn't come in with that doomed attitude. We still have a chance. So... Um, this one is such an ominous message. Anyway. Delicious. Fast cycle. Um. Flash. We don't have any effects yet, though. That's one area where we're definitely lagging behind. So that'll attract six. And here we can have food. One gradient. 
and colors. So between that, we'll have 11 customers today. Wow, you know, it's really amazing that we're able to predict our consumers that perfectly. This is clearly uh, goes to show just how far um, companies, you know, statistical abilities have come. Or something. A lot of the days of the week are named after deities. So Thursday is derived from Thor's day, you know, like the god. I mean, that's just normal bean trivia, everybody knows that. But, just kind of interesting. Yeah, we are losing today in a huge way. It's kind of interesting that people are more drawn to filthy than... than delicious. <sighs> I see, there's a bottom line beneath which the cards will not become less effective. I could have called those guys flat top and beardy. They are so hipster looking. Why are beards all the rage these days? All things come back in fashion, though. I... Oh, man. That's what's putting them ahead. The issue is... Well, they don't have enough money for that either. So... We need one of these. We could get that one. Well, actually, what we need to do... How many guy... How many customers is the enemy camp going to attract? This is all-out burger war. I feel like there was a Popeye short about that, and I remember, like, a scene where food is just being tossed between the two diners and Wimpy is grabbing them out of the air. That's one of the few animated Popeye shorts I really liked on its own merits a lot. Anyway, so one, one. Okay, so they have, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they have eight, ten, fifteen. Oh my god. God, 15, 17, 21, 24. We are lagging way, way behind that. Now, the good thing about this one is they're not going to buy it. And it's pretty clever. I'll take it. Well, actually, hold on. If I take that one... Yeah, it's cheaper than this and will attract the same number of customers. It's a little more boring, but you can't argue with what's effective. The main thing, their main advantage over us isn't just the number of cards, but they also have an extra frame. So they have more space to use the cards. The question is... Will this bring in more customers than getting just both of these? I mean, let's think about this. So every sign can use only one of any of these cards. So let's say the maximum for the first sign would be four, uh, would be five. The next sign could be five and it would be six. So six and, uh, uh, what was the other number I said? Five? So four, yeah, six and five is 11. But if we got this, we could now add like two. So yeah, it's definitely more in our interest to get these other cards. And um, yeah, I'm doing my best. We'll probably not beat them today. I mean, that's what really makes this so dangerous. You fall behind once, you are screwed. Pretty realistic in that respect, I guess. By the way, if there's a music playing in the background in the video, that's because I put it in. That music uh, isn't actually there. Wait a minute, what did that colorful thing I bought do? Or wait, I didn't buy it, never mind. Not sure what fall down if- Oh, that's what it is! Not bad. We're still probably not gonna beat them. Even at the same time, we're still drawing in more customers. 
if nothing else, Jay will learn the value of using modern marketing techniques, which up till now, because he's a kind of old fashioned kind of guy, he's been hesitant to do. What the? Oh, we can adjust the color. Red all the way. We are a communist burger. <laughs> burger stand. I guess burgers have a long pedigree in video games, going back to burger time. Don't they? You know, I've never sold hamburgers in real life, so I wouldn't know what this is like. Um... Wait, does that burger... Does the sign on the filthy burger stand say, like, FOB? Like, why does it say FOB? We are screwed. We have fallen so deeply behind after just one day. There's still two days, though. I think we're probably doomed, but naive American optimism would tell me that we could do it if with enough elbow grease. And here, it might not be so naive. Maybe. I guess it would be Irish optimism, though, because this is an Irish game. Wait a minute, I get it. The one who's really benefiting here is that 19th century looking salesperson. That's life for you, huh? Totally get this. So we still have $40, huh? How can we maximize the people we draw in with $40? Well, I think it's clear that this is going to give us a very good per uh, customer value. Like, a cost-to-customer ratio. We have $20. I think the best we can do... Well, in this case, it doesn't matter which of these we get, so we might as well get... Well, actually, it does. Hold on. It does matter which one of those we get. We're going to get this one. Oh. We could get both. I hadn't realized. I must have misread the prices. I guess the big mystery to me is... Is this game going to have some kind of big point? Like, I feel like the other one had a clever twist to it. So far, this is just an interesting little idea for a game. What the heck? Not sure how that works. Why there are numbers on them. Anyway. This is going to be our strongest sign. We are, we're behind because we didn't have these three different... What? Oh, I see. If you click outside the game window, it pauses. That's a nice touch. Anyway, we're going to get a flash. He's a, not my favorite superhero. I don't like superheroes that much, if I'm honest, but that's pretty tangential to the matter at hand. This is still our most effective one. Today we're going to break 20 customers, but I'm just afraid it might not be worth it. Well, this is a best bet for this one. So, how about we write, um... Class and flavor. Thumbs up. Sounds good to me. And, uh... Fast cycle. It's the best we can do, and we're still falling behind. I bet you today that, that Filthy Burger is going to break 20 customers, or 30 customers, I mean, just kill me, God. At this point, it might be impossible to beat Filthy Burger. This ends here, have a burger. I gotta admit, that one's kind of clever. I like that one. The best burger I ever ate was in Kansas City, Missouri. You think it'd be in Kansas, but no, it's in Missouri. Although I think part of it is in uh, Kansas. Like that one city in Turkey that's part in Europe and part in, in uh, Asia. 
Crutch. Thanks a lot, man. It was delicious. These burgers are incredible. I never thought burgers could be this good until I ate these. It was at a restaurant called Blanc. I hear they're closed now, though. It's very tragic. Canvas, uh, canvas. Kansas City is one of those few things out in the desolate post-apocalyptic wasteland that is Missouri. It's not that bad, of course. It's hardly post-apocalyptic. By the way, he's shaking his fist. He's not waving. <sighs> How can we maximize our money today? If we... Oh, well, that's useless to us anyway. Um... But unlike us, that isn't a clever message. That's just mean-spirited. Like ours was, too. The filthy burger is literally filthy. But this one is just... There's nothing clever about it. There's no pun. They could say... I don't know. It's something rhymes with J. Bay? Say? I don't know. In any case... I think we should go for this one. Thanks for making that shuffling sound just to mock us, filthy burger. This is a march to defeat, is what this is. I guess we can just open our burger stand on another corner. My grandfather told me stories of a guy who lived in um, his city, who, and this is in like the 30s, the guy was, um, I want to say he was missing a leg, and he opened a stand where he sold tamales. Or wait, he didn't have a stand. He just sold tamales. And in 1930s, that wasn't something that you would normally just see around. Hot tamale. Hot. Today. And apparently nobody ever knew where he got those tamales. He wouldn't tell people. Don't pause it. Interestingly, uh... Well, here's the sad ending. It ended up becoming illegal. Jays. It's pathetic enough for our final day. And uh, anyway, what was I saying? I don't get it. What is this diff What do the numbers mean? How many times it'll sequence or something? <sighs> We've lost this. Let's go. Anyway, they made it illegal to sell tamales and, or anything like that on the street. But hey, he was such a local fixture, the cops made an exception for him. And he was known by a really eccentric nickname, which escapes me right now. This man who sold tamales. Man, tamales. I'm not sure I've ever eaten a tamale. I've eaten those Chinese things where they're like a, uh, a bamboo leaf wrapped around rice. It's... they're kind of similar, I think. I believe that tamales are... Yeah, I know. I'm pretty... wait, tamales are those things that are like rice wrapped in corn husks, right? Or am I getting them confused with something else? I don't know. Either way, I never ate them. Eh, you lose, old man. So, is that it? Yeah, I guess so. I'm surprised. I thought there'd be some kind of twist or interesting theme explored. But I guess this is more like V, 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 V in that respect. It's just exploring a gameplay mechanic and doesn't attach anything deeper to it. That's fine, but I don't know. I was kind of hoping for some kind of twist on this. But yeah, this is a okay little game. I mean, it's fine. It's not quite my cup of tea, but I don't know what else to say about it. Other than create a sign. Oh, random. That is so scary. 
there seems to be a sort of ominous anti-consumerism in it. You don't see much edible food around today. Um... But what can you do? How about I type... Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Ah, this is all we can do. Good enough. And here we are with the next game. Phobia, phobia, phobia. I looked at a little bit of this one, too. It seems to be some kind of text-based adventure game. So let's press C for credits. Once again, good old Terry. Let's, uh, begin. Oh, wait, Kevin McLeod! Hey! The god of f free music. I've used his music many a time because I'm a loser who can't make my own. No, I'm, that's not true. I'm not a loser. Just because you don't, you're not an expert in something like making music doesn't mean you're a loser, obviously. I'm sorry. You at the back! The teacher points in your direction. Of those, of, of these two, would you rather... Have an, have an injection, or be set on fire. What kind of question is that? Of course I'd rather have an injection. I, I need to get a flu shot right now, actually. That's normal. Being set on fire is not, unless you're a self-immolating Buddhist monk. The injection is directly into your eye. Um... Damn. Maybe the fire? Because you could just stop, drop, and roll. I mean, your clothes would be ruined, and you'd probably have some bad burns, but... I'm really sensitive about my eyes. The entire class stares at you. The subject's greatest fear is being around spiders. What? What are you talking about? Well, okay. As you sit down for dinner, you receive a phone call. A woman on the other end asks you if you're happy with your current home insurance solution. You tell her you are. In that case, she says, would you rather be surprised by a loud noise or fall from a great height? Well, obviously the noise. If you fall from a great height, you die. Being surprised, I mean, I don't like screamers, but I would rather have that than fall off my balcony. The noise is extremely loud. It causes permanent hearing damage. Would you rather still the noise? You are blindfolded as you fall. So? I don't care about the falling part. I care about the landing part, ma'am. The woman hangs up without saying another word. What's that thing in the background? It's like a Rorschach test. The subject fears both being around spiders and small spaces equally. So, are they just giving us random scenarios that don't make much sense and then nonsense diagnoses? Okay, yeah, let's, um, just thought I'd want to see if anything changed with the credits. Let's go. You sit down at your desk and begin writing. You feel prepared. All the questions look familiar. One question as you puzzled, though. 93. Would you rather be sneezed on or trapped in a lift? These seem... Except for the eyeball thing, I can't... Yeah, I mean, I'd rather be sneezed on, you know? Being trapped on a lift sucks. Seriously. Well, I guess it depends how long we're trapped in the lift. Like, both of these have a lot of other details. For example, being trapped in a lift for 10 minutes? That's not that bad. Being trapped on a lift for three days? That's hell. In fact, I think you might die. I don't know how long you can go without the water. Um, but without, given that you can just invent qualifiers to go with any of these, fine, the lift. I'll show you who's scared of small spaces. The rest of the test goes well. Don't! What? We missed the title screen again. Um, anyway, has it been long since your last confession? It has, you say. The priest asks, would you rather be publicly humiliated or homeless? Humiliated. 
You would never recover from the humiliation. All your friends and family would disown you. Well, if you're homeless, that's probably happened anyway. Although you would be homeless, you would be able to live with relative comfort. Relative to what? You mean we might sleep on a bench instead of a sidewalk? There is only silence from the other side of the confessional. Father, why are you asking me these things? So we fear both being homeless and heights equally. Yeah, this is just nonsense. On your way home late at night, a homeless man corners you in a dark alleyway. He asks, would you rather walk down a dark corridor or be caught in a storm? By the way, I see the thing in the background is a hip bone. Um, anyway, obviously... Well, once again, there are a lot of qualifiers here. For example, what's the dark corridor? Is it like in a house we live in? Is it in an abandoned property? These make big differences, you know? Now, I am scared of the dark, but I'd probably go for the corridor, I have to say. As long as we're not being pursued by a monster, you sense there is someone else with you in the corridor. Well, once again, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Like, what? where is the dark corridor? Is the person in the corridor our butler? You would be inside at night during the thunderstorm. Oh, well that, yeah, totally. If, that, that doesn't, that completely mitigates anything bad about being caught in the storm. The man seems satisfied. I see. Good night then. I wish I could have a civil conversation with a homeless guy like that. What? That's a lot of people being injured by lifts. How, is that true? I mean, there are millions of people in the United States, so it could be. You wake standing up at the bottom of a deep hole filled up to your neck with water, with no memory of how you got there. Now, this is a big turning point. Has this all been some elaborate conspiracy against us? After some time, you hear a whisper from high above you. Would you rather be trapped in a lift or be sneezed on. Is this this question again? I'll be- that this was what you wanted last time, right? The lift is slowly getting smaller and smaller. Eventually it will crush you. Sneezed! You hear a manic laugh from above the hole. The Grand Canyon has an observation deck with a glass floor that spans 70 feet out into the canyon. Yeah, I've heard of that. That sounds horrifying. And I have uh, stories related to the Grand Canyon, but this isn't the time for them. You at the back. The... Wait, did it just restart? But these are new questions. I would rather be publicly humiliated. I can recover from that. I can still draw cartoons if I've been publicly humiliated. I, I can't do that if I have no limbs. I'm more concerned with my ability to draw than my reputation. Even though my ability to draw isn't much. I don't care what you're gonna s attach to this. So how did we... The servants cannot tend... Okay, the servants cannot tend to, m to drawing my pictures. Only I can do that. And that's why I'm so scared of losing my limbs, in fact. Or my hands, anyway. Yeah, is this beginning to loop? What is this? Did we escape from the hole where we were had water up to our neck? Is this going anywhere? Yeah, this is beginning to recur. An injection. I don't know. Either way, it's gonna involve pain, but I'm beginning to think this is going to just recur. The man is satisfied, huh? We've expressed little fear of social situations. Okay, now this is something new. You can't focus on the exam. The woman in front of you has a huge spider on her back. You ponder one particular question on the exam, though, 93. 
Would you rather suffer amnesia or fall from a great height? Amnesia won't kill us. You would no longer be able to retain long-term memories. Well, given that they like to make up random mitigating factors, yeah, I'm gonna say, actually, fall from a great height. Because they could have something that somehow... Like, we could have a parachute that slows our descent so we don't die. The rest of the test goes well. You wake standing up at the bottom of a deep hole once again. I guess we got amnesia anyway. Now this Roshak, uh, Roshak thing, in, Roshak, however you say it, in the background. This one makes me think of trees. Anyway, once again, I would much rather... Wait, a whisper? Was it a whisper last time? Either way, this is beginning to scare me. Um, I mean, we're trapped in a hole, and the, not that the music has changed. Anyway, I would rather be surprised by a loud noise. The noise is extremely loud. I don't care. Now, even knowing the spiders may be harmless, I don't care. The spiders are harmless house spiders. Well, the thing is, what do you mean by a house spider? Now, I like spiders, but even I don't think I could take being covered in them. You hear a manic laugh from above the hole. At this point, I'm fairly convinced that this is going to recur indefinitely. It's some surreal, recursive nightmare world of random people asking us these horrible Catch-22 questions, for which there is no right answer, and they'll scorn us no matter what we do. Or rather, they'll scorn us for one answer, but be smugly self-complacent for the other. And in the end, we're trapped in a hole where we're left to die by some maniac. Well, okay. It's pretty weird, but I'm not quite sure what to make of it. It reminds me of like the... There was a Silent Hill game where there was a creepy psychologist who asks you about phobias. I never actually played it, but I know there was one. Maybe this is like a... cousin of that. Or something? Alright, here we go. Something more down to earth. Moving stories! Hooray! See, listen to that charming music, these nice pixel graphics. There's even a tree. I'm guessing this is the building we're moving out of rather than moving into. It reminds me of the uh, building where my sister used to live. I remember there was a really weird, sleazy-seeming landlord who had arguments with one of the other tenants. I believe he was Cuban. He would sit on the, on the stoop Smoking cigarettes. He had some gold chains, if I remember right. By the way, if you're wondering who that second fellow is, he's another weird indie game designer. He's creators of such classic games as Striptease. Um, and where's the butthole? Actually, Striptease is actually an interesting, well-designed, thought-provoking game. Um, he also made Invisible Cities, which I think might be his most famous game. It's still on the list of stuff to play. The main challenge is getting it running, or for me it is. Okay, so here's our house. Right, we should get this stuff packed. Thanks so much for coming to help. The cab will be here soon. So, I guess this woman here is us. The main question is... What? Did something just pop up in the corner? Oh yeah, it did. The sunflower. We can select mittens, huh? I'm gonna say that was a purr. I love you, mittens. Damn, I can't fit the plant. I hope the new tenants take care of it. Wait, is it her who's thinking this? I guess so, but then who came here to help her pack? Oh, wait a minute! It was me, old mackerel phones who came to help her pack. I've not packed yet. Well, I see, we'll throw out what we can't fit, huh? Let's pack. I happen to know that the trick to packing stuff is to, um, roll it up, minimizing the surface area on clothing. Though, they come out pretty wrinkled. So what do we got here? 
Well, we have party clothes, uh, Mr. Snuggles, mug, travel card, and everyday clothes. I don't, well, I don't think there's room, yeah, there's not room, well, there is room for just this and just this, but we need more than that. Um, and if you have to pick between everyday and party clothes, it's really no contest. And sure enough, you can't fit the flower. Although, you'd get dirt all over your things if you did that. So, we need the essentials, so we have this. Um, we need our travel card, that's for sure. And razors. I mean, we could buy those, though, so I'll wait until later. Earplugs, though, you always need. I can't sleep without them. And... Um, we have the family photo. Family's important. And we have the everyday dildo. As opposed to what? The non-everyday dildo? The special Thursday dildo? Maybe it's a fancy... We, maybe we've also have like a... Well, anyway, this is, is certainly an essential. You gotta have your masturbatory equipment. Um, besides your genitals, I mean. But yeah, you know, I guess we could have like a deluxe... Thursday dildo that like not only does the normal dildo things but it has you know other useful functions too it's a back scratcher and uh, a video game controller compatible with uh, some PCs and best of all it um also dispenses coffee <laughs> it, can, it can um it can you know pour out the coffee like urine or semen I guess Anyway, we need a book. My suitcase is always stuffed with books and clothes. Um... Mittens? We need mittens. Yeah, I don't blame you for leaving mittens. Um... Well, obviously we need our passport. Uh... We can buy a new scarf. We don't need the chocolate, that's for sure. We have a suit and another suit. Well, I don't know. I'll put Mr. Snuggles in over that. The issue with this is we can't change the orientation of the ukulele, but we could fit in the ukulele, I think, and the passport. So let's see if we can. Here's a ukulele. Um. There we go. Perfect. We got all the essentials. Though, it is a shame we'll have to leave behind Mr. Snuggles. I'm sure we have a long history with Mr. Snuggles, but... Hey, he's just excess baggage at the end of the day. Unless you're an animist. But Mittens, though. Mittens, you gotta be in here. What are we gonna do without you, Mittens? Oh, wait, there's a timer going down in the corner. I hadn't noticed that. Well, it's a good thing I did this all with plenty of time to spare anyway. Let's go. All right, this is everything. Thanks a lot, Mittens. I'm moving in with Mark. Wonder where he's gonna keep his clothes now. Well, surely the same closet is yours. I don't care much for music, but people tell me I'm great. It's Mark's favorite. Oh, does he play with it too? I can't stand to hear him grunting during sex. Yeah. I won't need this now, but I don't want to forget our time apart. That's an odd thing to say. The art of war. Aw, Mark looked so cute when he had hair. Wait a minute. This is Mark's family photo? What an odd twist. Why do we have that? Why? why? Or wait. Well, this can't be Mark's clothes, because there's women's clothes. Or, well, it doesn't actually... You know, he could wear them, but... Okay, that's it. Thanks for helping me pack. You're welcome. Ready. Just need to take care of the trash. Go outside and dump it, I guess? Yeah. We'll throw out our memories with the rest of the trash. Some person just drove by with their own story. Someone else. 
Let's trash! I got nervous on my first date and threw up all over my new dress. That made him nervous and he threw up on it as well! Aww. No, I see, there's a story for every object. Or not all of them, apparently. Mark's allergic. Mark's X was so thin. Winter's on the way. I'll restock in March. Mark says I have a problem. He has the worst scarves. If he asks, I'll just tell him we lost it. Goodbye, Mr. Snuggles. Aww. Oh, and the th she threw out the trash can, too. Okay, just one thing left. What's that? Wanna look at the tray? Nah, she doesn't. She'll walk over to it, though. Back into our flat, huh? Now that I see it in color, it no longer looks like my sister's former apartment. What's this? Let's pack. Oh, I see. Bittens. In you go, girl. Could be a boy, though. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, but don't worry. This will be fine. We'll take good care of you. Well, Sunflower? I'll see you next time. Wait, is this your whole flat? Well, surely it's not. They're probably like a door off to the side that leads to the toilet or something. Nearly ready to go. I guess we'll go? Hey, Mark. Oh, wait, that's Mom. Sorry, I... Sorry. Mom, hi. I knew you weren't mature enough to take responsibility for a cat. Thanks for helping me out, Mom. When I was your age, I had three children. Yes, Mom. Three children and a husband. I'm not gonna try doing an Irish accent. Yes, Mom. And my husband had a job. Thanks for helping, Mom. <laughs> I suppose I'll see you for Christmas then. Yes, Mom. Thanks so much. She's an old-fashioned type, she is, but her, you know, she's basically well-intentioned. Oh, that's my cab. Time to go. That bar transition has been in, was also in Catch Them by the Eyes, right? What an odd way to put it, as if we lost. Huh. I suppose it was just an exploration of the stories connected to the objects we're packing, and the significance of what we leave behind and bring with us. I think that this one has multiple endings, uh, depending on what stuff you decide to bring and what stuff you decide not to bring. Um, I think? New item handgun? What? Right. We should get this stuff packed. The, the, sorry, this changes my perspective on these... On this. Yeah, there's a handgun. I've got to look into the handgun. This changes the whole story. We'll put it right next to the dildo. Admittedly, unlike the last time I packed, this time it isn't organic. Like, I'm actually have some sense of, oh, well, maybe I can pack this to see what will happen this time. Um, in which case, I think I'm definitely miss, you know, losing something that I had before. Um, in any case, though, 
I don't know that I can play it the way I did before again, because I don't know. Like, now I know what's going to happen. All right, this is everything. I'm moving in with Brad. Oh, is this a different woman? Wonder where he's gonna keep his clothes now. Brad said he wants to sew a hole, a new hole in you. It'll be a great way for all three of us to connect, Mr. Snuggles. Sew a hole? Don't you mean sew it shut? So that's Brad's favorite dildo. I need these for the main project in the latest craft monthly. Weird. I hate summertime. She likes to be hairy. I'll get Brad a matching gun. It'll be super cute. I won't need this now, but I don't want to forget our time apart. Okay, that's it. Thanks for helping me pack. Well, um... Well, dump out the rubbish, right? Oh, it's a, a different season now. Oh, are we moving out from where we were moved? Like, before we were moved in with Mark, and now we're moving out? I got nervous on my first date, and... Well, yeah, the same story. She has no stories for the suits, though. Probably just work. Is this like an alternate timeline? Oh, a room of one's own. God, I hate that book. I don't miss it. Yeah. I bet she just puts post-it notes on everything. Um. <laughs> You'll buy him some cuter scars. It's a dumb instrument anyway. Yeah, you don't need it for self-defense because you have a gun. That's a little better. I think it's interesting that these are all flash games and so have no necessity to be pixelated, but they're all pixelated anyway. Maybe I don't need to point that out. I mean, it's been done before, but it's just an interesting thing to me. Like. These aren't designed in an engine where, like, it requires the pixelation. It probably took more work to pixelate them, in fact. Hi, Mom. Bye, Mom. Oh, that's my cab. Time to go. Huh. And now we have a bottle of urine. Every time you play it, you're just gonna get more weird stuff, right? Well, in any case, I'm glad that, um, I got to play these games before they were destroyed forever. Although, I have a feeling that Terry is the kind of guy who would probably have some kind of plan in place to preserve his games longer. Maybe someday they'll all be to, uh, gathered together into an anthology and released on some gaming platform. That'd be nice. Though I wouldn't know what kind of coding hoops you'd have to go through to make that work. In any case, uh... These are just, this has been Mackerel Phones, guys, just showing you some of the weird, quirky, charming, and kind of less than good, but also good, and, and really good even, little games that are available for free on the internet. There is a whole world of interesting little art projects out there that are just charming and plain fun, if you know where to look. So thanks, Terry. I have... I doubt you'll ever see this video, but I appreciate the work you've done for video games. I appreciate that you're both making stuff like VVVVVV, 
which are, is a pulse-pounding, platforming fun, and more experimental, sort of human stuff, we might say, like this. There are hundreds of this kind of thing, obviously not all made by Terry Kavanagh. I'm sorry, Terry, I don't know how to say your name. I looked it up, and I didn't find a satisfactory answer either. Um, so, yeah. This has been Macro Phones, everybody. 